this topic is so haunting to me. Like, somebody could go out there and throw gorillas, Clint Eastwood, and put it on in the background of this video, and I would respond like, yeah, that's kind of the appropriate feeling, because we're talking today about JT Miller once again, and believe me, we're going to have a lot of JT Miller conversations over the next few days because heading into the NHL draft, it's really going to start to open up as to which teams could be involved and other teams could be sleeper teams in this conversation too. We're going to go over everything that pops up because of course we are. You want to hear it, I want to talk about it, so... This conversation here is a big one. It's never ending. It's probably never going to end until he actually gets traded. But we have ourselves a conversation that was happening on Sportsnet 650 the other day. This is via their Twitter account. It was from yesterday, or excuse me, not yesterday. It was on Wednesday, I believe. Yes, the first. Could a surprise team be interested in JT Miller? Do the NHL's New Jersey Devils, why did I say it like that? Do the Devils have legitimate interest in the Canucks forward too? Now, I get it. You can see the post. You can see it says, oh, there's a sleeper team. We're going to talk about that after. Not this video. A few videos after. We're going to talk about the sleeper team. But for now, I wanted to focus on the New Jersey Devils because Irfan Gafar, formerly of Sportsnet, now of the fourth period, did indeed show up on the show. And he had a little segment talking about the Devils and whether or not they could be a team in for Miller. This is the summary from Tash. Earth agrees with Sat that, okay, no, we're not going to talk about that. That sleeper team is going to be in the next video. Earth also mentioned where there's smoke, there's fire, with the Miller and the Devil's rumors. He also did mention they will offer a contract extension to Miller, just so they can say they did. Reading between the lines, it doesn't sound like it's going to be a great offer from the Vancouver Canucks. Now, I get it. You could say, oh, Tash is just a random Twitter guy. What credence does he have to be able to say something like that? Well... It's not really something that I think is all too surprising, based off of how Rutherford and Alvin and all of the other media appearances have been going down. If JT Miller gets a low-ball contract offer from the Canucks, one that isn't in the $8-9 million range, I don't think a lot of Canucks fans are going to be too surprised. The guy's probably going to get traded. If he doesn't, then he gets re-signed to a smaller amount, then hey, I'll bite my tongue and I'll say that I'm wrong. But either way, we'll get there when we get there. Let's talk about the New Jersey Devils, though, because Rafan did say on this segment that where there is smoke, there is fire. He says that they're a team that's been reported to being very interested on JT Miller and the services that Miller could provide as a young-ish kind of guy. He's not super old. He's not in his 30s yet, but he's approaching there. He's already young enough while also being a star that you could give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he has more good years ahead of him. Plus the fact that he's on a younger team in New Jersey. Jack Hughes, Nico Hischier, Shane Wright. Okay, no, I'm not going to go out there and say that. Um, Holtz, Mercer, Brat, all the defensemen, Luke Hughes, etc. There are some young players on this team, and JT Miller could be seen as that leadership kind of figure to come over, be the guy that drives the bus, be the guy who puts the foot on the gas pedal and acts as the leader on this team. Sure, he's not taken away the captaincy or anything from Nico Hischier, but he is providing a role that not too many players on the Devils can actually say they fulfill. Miller is a 100-point player, and if the Vancouver Canucks go out there and say, hey, some teams are offering a package where we retain 50%, there is a huge, huge pool of potential for what the Canucks could get in a bidding war for Miller. I've been saying the same thing for the past five months, it appears. But for New Jersey, there has indeed been a conversation going on about the second overall pick. Because even other NHL analysts have been reporting that this pick, apparently, it's on the market. This was on 32 Thoughts from yesterday. Elliot Friedman goes out there and talks about the first two picks. New Jersey is going to be fascinating over the next few weeks. The number two pick is in play, making a list of players they would consider trading for it. One guarantee is if they do move it, it's for talent with a lot of team control. Same with Ottawa at 7th overall. Now, for Miller, you could definitely say that if there is somewhat of a trade, the team that is trading for this guy is going to have to be super aware of the contract side of things. You need to make sure either A, you're a good enough team that you can afford to only get Miller for a year, win a cup or maybe go to the finals or maybe make the third round or whatever, and then be okay with letting him go, or... 
you got to be a team that's young, up and coming, and saying, okay, we can afford to pay this guy eight, nine million dollars a year. Give him the Zabanej ad contract because he had a 100 point season or a 99 point season in 80 games played. The Devils are in a position where I do feel like they're more on the ladder, where if they had to make a choice, they would get Miller because they want to keep this guy for the long haul, and it would be really interesting just having that little piece of trivia that, hey, this guy would have played with all three Hughes brothers at different points of his career, Quinn in Vancouver and then Jack in New Jersey, eventually Luke suits up in New Jersey as well. That'd be really interesting, would it not? Like, wow, now that I think about it, Miller and Quinn had such good chemistry on the power play, like every other pass was to one of those two guys. You would pretty much be seeing the same thing happening in New Jersey with Jack and Luke. Miller, if you plant him on that left power play slot, he's going to put up points, assuming the Devils are able to convert as much as the Canucks did this previous season. But when you go over to returns, you talk about that second overall pick. Is that enough for JT Miller? I'd probably say no, especially considering the magnitude of what JT Miller's trade price was supposed to be. A first round pick, a roster player, and a top prospect. Second overall is going to be a fantastic prospect. Yuri Slavkovsky, Logan Cooley, heck, you could argue some of the other guys too, Brad Lambert, Matthew Savoy, Simon Nemec, David Juracek, there are some fantastic players at the top of the 2022 draft. And if the Vancouver Canucks are able to get, hey, a David Juracek, for example, right-handed defenseman, top two potential, Simon Nemec is also a right-handed defenseman, he's a mobile puck-carrying machine. If you have any of these guys joining the organization and rounding out the defense core because you traded away JT Miller and you also got like another roster player or something in return, that would be a huge win. Although it would have to be something that the New Jersey Devils continue to think about before they pull the trigger on said move. Because it's no secret that the Devils could also use some right-handed defense depth as well in their prospect pool. They've got a lot of lefties, a lot of Luke Hughes's and Shakir Makamadoulins, etc, etc, but they could really use that Yerachek or a Nemich as well. It's just who really knows if they're going to go that route if they don't make a trade and they decide to keep the second overall pick. It's kind of funny, because every time we make a video talking about second overall caliber prospects, it's always New Jersey fans and Montreal fans crowding the comment section saying, hey, Savkowski is a guy that brings a different element to our team. He's big, he's strong, he's powerful. Sorry to say, but Hughes, Hishier, these guys are not the most strong guys out there. They're good, but they don't have the same skills that Slavkovsky has or that he could have as he projects into the long-term future. And then you talk about Logan Cooley saying, oh, this guy's also really skilled. He'd be very good with Jack Hughes and Alex Holtz, you know, setting up these guys like crazy. It would be really nice to see, right? But either way... There's a conversation to have about JT Miller because he plays somewhat of a style that I think the New Jersey Devils don't have either. He is a hard-nosed winger that pretty much does everything you need a guy to do. And I say winger mostly because he plays out on the power play. He starts out on all the faceoffs, etc. He is pretty much a center who takes draws and then who moves over to the wing to give Elias Pettersson those center lanes, etc. But... Either way, JT Miller is a guy that plays a game very different from Jack Hughes. He plays different from Nico Hishier. I think he's a lot more aggressive and finesse than Nico Hishier. This is definitely not that same type of player, so if you want to talk about Yaroslav Kovsky benefiting because he has a different style than a lot of your players, I definitely do think Miller could suffice a similar argument too. But let me know in the comments all your thoughts about this idea. If you're a Vancouver Canucks fan, what is it from New Jersey that you want to acquire in a JT Miller trade that involves the second overall pick? JT Miller for second, is that good enough? Do you want to say that the Devils should add more? You gotta remember, New Jersey wasn't even supposed to get second overall. They won a lottery spot and got themselves the pick because of the ping pong balls. They didn't really finish in a poor enough standing to get second overall in the first place. So you could say that this extra value that they have is a gift. So second overall for JT Miller, is that enough? Do you want to say Miller for a second overall pick plus another prospect? Maybe some other guy that was taken in the second or first round in earlier years plus another roster player? Is that something you're interested in? If you're a New Jersey Devils fan and you're thinking about taking your Slavkovsky or Logan Cooley or you're just not sold in anybody on that second overall spot, would you trade this pick for a JT Miller? And if the Vancouver Canucks ask you to add more would you do that? Talk in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. I was from Link in the description is going to be to the Sportsnet one minute audio hit from two days ago's show where Irfan Gafar was indeed brought on and he said what it was that he said. And bye.